Greetings, this is Time Rider. I was actually planning to release this video on Sunday when I saw another channel also did a restoration on this toy. So I decided to wait a few days. With all the cooperative ventures going on, I didn't want anyone to get the impression that it was a setup. This toy was based on the Otter produced by Guy Motors. Incidentally, here in the hinterland, that's how it's pronounced. Guy. I respect that elsewhere it may be pronounced Guy, and I don't know for sure, so please don't blow up my comments about it. At any rate, Guy or Guy Motors was a British company established in 1914. It was co-opted in both world wars, producing armored vehicles, among other things, to be sure. It had a significant impact on the motor industry, producing buses, double and single decker, as well as trolley buses. The company went into receivership and through several mergers and finally ended up as a part of British Leyland. The doors were closed on their production facility in August of 1982. The toy was manufactured by Lesney from 1960 to 1964 with a few variations. Early versions were blue and then green thereafter with the exception of a brown version that had a decal which read Beals Bielsen. They finally did an isolated production run on the green model in 1967 before retiring the casting. It never made it into the super fast era. I'm going to try and restore this toy, so stick around. The toy was held together with a tab in the back and kind of a chassis tab on the front that went through the base. Uh, I bent the back a little bit, taking it apart. So I grabbed a needle nose and straightened it gently. I was fortunate that the back door was in the ceiling. I just had to get it out. And then, of course, uh, I need to grind off the edge of that chassis tab on the front because I want the model to go together easily uh, once I'm done painting. The bottom was in pretty good shape. I decided to just leave it the way it was. Uh, I did notice one slight bend in one of the front corners, so I just straightened it real quick. And then uh, moving on to the tried and true method of paint removal of just dropping the casting into some aircraft stripper and giving it a little shake with the lid on. On castings of this type, it's important to get them really clean because it, on a flat surface like that, any blemishes in the paint are going to show. Uh, so I've taken a wire brush to it and uh, the front is going to be having certain elements of it painted so I want to get those good and clean. I had been using screws on the bottoms of these things and it dawned on me that I really didn't need to do that. They don't weigh that much and I have these carpet tacks that I got like for a buck or something. And uh, so I'm just going to super glue a carpet tack on the inside of the model so I have a place to hold it. By the way, this Loctite super glues, they're just, I love the container they come in. I can't say enough about it. Uh, they hardly ever super glue their own lids shut and uh, they're just so much easier to deal with. 4 hot steel wool is the perfect finish uh, before paint to get this model looking as good as it possibly can. Normally I would have done this with white primer, but I was currently out, so I'm going to have to use gray. Now, the green I just kind of mixed from photographs, and I used it by taking green and yellow, and then more green, and then a little white, then a little more yellow, then a little more green, then uh, a drop of black, and finally I got somewhere in the neighborhood of what I was looking for. 
after a tack coat we put on a nice heavy coat i think it's a nice looking green i i don't know about you but i think i got pretty close to the green that it was painted color matching is a myth anyway too many variables now these decals were like laying carpet I don't think I've ever applied a decal this big and they wrinkled and they wrinkled and they I smoothed and they wrinkled some more and I smoothed them again and then finally I got them somewhere where I wanted them and then I use microset which of course wrinkled them even more but it softens them up enough so that they do tend to lay a little flatter and they get uh, good adhesion and of course I use a cotton bud here to squeegee out any moisture from underneath the uh, decal The front end of this thing was painted pretty much the same from beginning to end. There were a few years where there was no headlights painted, but the bumper and the grill were uh, always painted. I found when doing these bumpers, I I'm guessing these gals at, uh, and I say gals because I think this was probably something that women did a lot. Uh, but I bet you they do these bumpers in a second, but I found that you're almost better off just going faster and I know I still don't go as fast as they probably do So anyway uh, I'm just using uh, Tamiya silver here And then after that it was uh, Time to address the chassis a little bit uh, I, I'm not gonna paint it. I just left the wheels on it. The chassis was in pretty good shape But I do want to dress the wheels and tires up a little bit so A little more silver for the hubs Now I know that there are people who do this who Never clear coat, but I like to clear coat, especially when there's decals, because uh, I'm fixing a flea bite. I think when you clear coat over the decals, you know, they last a good long time after that. So, um, yeah, I'm just, I'm one of those people that clear coats. And as long as I have it in the paint booth, I'll clear coat the entire toy. Personally, I think it looks better. There are uh, toys that I just do straight paint, usually if, if I'm shooting enamel. Uh, enamel kind of has a, a shine all its own. But you can see here the clear coat, that X22 Tamiya, boy, it settles so nice. So, uh, after waiting a, a day for the clear coat to dry, uh, I usually wait a day, especially when I'm shooting acrylics. So the door is put into the, the main casting, and then the chassis just snaps back on over that uh, retention clip. All I did was uh, 
throw a drop of super glue on that front clip to hold the whole thing together. I'm pretty sure if I ever wanted to get it apart, I'd be able to. Just want to make sure it's dry. And then I saw a little piece of lint or something in the wheel well. Got to get it all purdy. So here's where we started. Uh, you know, the decals originally were uh, pretty shot. This model actually came with two different decals. Some of them only have two lines. Uh, the bottom line is not included. And then uh, some of them have more, that additional line about in all towns. So let's see where I wound up. So there you have it. The Matchbox number 46B Pickford's Remover Van. Stick around for a short episode of the bench if that's your thing. See what I got going on on my workbench this week. This is Time Rider. And I'll leave the light on for you. Hey, thanks for sticking around so I can share with you useless knowledge. I talk a little bit about what I got going on on the bench right now, and I'm about ready to paint this again. Uh, when I painted it the first time, if you recall, I wound up getting a couple flea bites on the hood. When I tried to fix them, they were the wrong color. And then, you know, I kind of set it aside, but then I picked it up again. And I made it my mission to file off as many of the casting lines as I possibly could before I painted it again. So, uh, here it is primed and ready for paint. I might get at that tomorrow. So, I've always been the kind of person that as I become more proficient at something, I raise the bar on myself higher and higher. And as I've been doing these restorations and customs, I've got to the point now where, you know, okay or nobody's going to see that are less and less likely to pass muster with me. So if you haven't already figured it out, this is the back of that Jaguar 32 E type. And I kind of dealt with the rust on or corrosion on the other side using uh, glazing putty and that worked really well and then I painted it and it looks like I'm gonna have to pay some attention to this side now uh, I don't know what that is but I can sand it smooth but I'm not gonna paint the model until it looks as good as it can possibly look and then uh, I ready for paint is that uh, 52 BRM racer uh, yeah, it, it's going to be a really simple restore, but I think once it's done, it's going to look super nice. And then I was painting the 74 Fleet Line again, and while I was painting it, I saw this start to develop uh, by the back of the toy. And so I just stopped painting immediately. I'm assuming that I have some type of a contaminant on the surface of the, the casting itself. So I'm going to have to, if I'm lucky, I can save this, and I'll just wet sand it and uh, clean it really good and then I can just start painting on it again. But anyway, that's what's going on on the bench. So share with somebody who might enjoy it, please. And if you click little wee down in the corner on your computer, you can uh, subscribe. So everybody take care and we'll see you in the next video.